Any last words? Send it. Can I start over? Should I go more? Okay. <laughs> um, just send it. Just shred it. Okay. My boat came loose. Yes, dog friendly. Tubeless problems. Oh yeah, right in the lane. Right there. Bravo. I don't know if they've been fixie tested. <laughs> How do you feel with this camera on your head? Feeling great. It's totally natural. Alien life force coming at me. You feel like you're on the Truman Show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live and direct from, from the Michelle show. Hi. I'm Michelle Wilcox. I'm born and raised in Raleigh, North Carolina. I moved to San Francisco two years ago. I uh, started working as a messenger when I moved out here. And now I work at Strava as a web engineer. Um, and so what brought me to San Francisco? Uh, I wanted to get off the East Coast. Um, I, yeah, like lived there for 24 years. Um, and I had traveled to the West Coast a handful of times with family or, and, and did some like, I did a lot of traveling with bike polo. Um, and that allowed me to see the city and uh, a lot and I you know just enjoyed riding out there and kind of love the fact that it has the beach and the mountains and the big city I just wanted something a larger city to to live in than Raleigh it was getting kind of small what bike am I riding um, I built this bike up just about three weeks ago um, this is a bike that Mike Martin, who's the owner of MASH, um, had himself and was willing um, when I came in looking to like build up a... I needed a new like commuter, uh, cruiser, chill, you know, bar bike to ride. Um, and because my commuter had a dent in it, so I kind of just wanted to like simplify for my Mr. Pink, so I got the Chinelli MASH work frame. It's one of the last ones that was done with Chinelli. Um, and I put a, <laughs> I built up some, uh, well, Boxdog helped me build up some Paul to, uh, Paul Hubs Lisa Velocity A23s. And then my buddy John helped me build up the rest. I just bought a bunch of parts really quick in like a week just because I wanted to build it before I uh, traveled home back to Raleigh. I wanted to have a bike to take with me that was like super easy to pack up and break down. And uh, it's got, yeah, like some, has some like A, <laughs> has some uh, gravel tires, 35s on it better gravel so I can do like both dirt and road uh, kind of just like best of both worlds kind of thing and so I can just be able to like ride it in the city and also ride it on the dirt as well yeah yeah well I guess like the thing is like this bike is really nice just because I love that I can like travel with it it's only it's really simple to break it down and I, I miss like I had a fixed gear when I moved here and I sold it because I was like over having I just didn't have enough room honestly to like store it I had too many other bikes and so this is the first um, so I haven't had a fixed gear in like two years over almost and I just wanted to get have another one it's just like the simplest you know it's like really fun to like be back on like the basics and like have something that I can just like commute to, ride it in the park, and fly with. So that's like why I'm really stoked on it. And I'm really stoked on it because it's it's MASH is a great company that you know like supports having like a good community and they represent a lot of things that I like support. So I'm I'm really stoked to like be riding something that they made. So we are going to the park side. 
um, mainly because my buddy RJ is working this morning. Um, it's like a part bar, part cafe. I was actually here less than 12 hours ago for taco night. Um, so back again. <laughs> and he wants us to bring the bikes inside. <laughs> So yeah, it's a, so it's actually a really cool spot. Um, a little bit of history is that RJ and I, um, actually last, I think this is where I met Terry, was when we, RJ and I threw a benefit here at the Parkside for Planned Parenthood and taking to the streets. We had like an art show slash bands and music and we did this benefit here. And the dudes that uh, own the park said it were cool enough to like let us have our little benefit there, and we raised like over a thousand dollars for um, those nonprofits, and it was really, really cool. Hey, buddy! Hey, what's up? How are you? Doing <laughs> um, I like your new hat. Thanks. Yeah, it's nothing much, you know. Just in the ordinary. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah. Just going for a ride. Cool. I was expecting you a little while ago. Ooh. A little delayed, okay? okay? I had to have a little slight gear ratio change. Oh, you did it. So, up, I went to box dogs. You? Good. Good. you guys want some drink? Yeah. Um, can I just have yeah. a coffee? <laughs> Thanks, RJ. You the bomb. You the bomb. When I first moved here, worked as a messenger. Um, that was kind of my way to get, like, I wanted to kind of learn the city. Um, I was completely new, didn't really know too many people in San Francisco, so it was like kind of a great gateway into, you know, moving out here. And, um, while I worked as a messenger, it gave me the freedom to just uh, work, do some like freelance jobs, um, doing web design um, for various like friends that had like businesses. Um, Fix Craft is like a polo um, distributor and manufacturer, and I did the website for them um, and a handful of other people. And while I was um, you know, working on the road. Um, I was working on just like my own projects too. Um, and then eventually kind of like built up my portfolio enough to where I could apply to Strava. It was kind of like, it took me a while to realize <laughs> that um, I wanted, I was trying to, it took me a, real, a while to realize where I wanted to work in the city. Um, I didn't want to work for just any tech startup. Um, and Strava has a really great balance of, you know, they build a product that encourages people to go out and ride and run. And they have a really um, awesome group of, uh, group of employees that are super, you know, into riding and running. So it's just like, I'm really, I love everyone that I work with. The work challenges me um, with my like development skills. And yeah, it's like kind of my dream job. So I'm really, it took me a while to like be able to um, work my way up to get there, but I'm stoked that I was able to uh, land a job there. So I've been there for six months now. Um, so I got my first bike or built up my first bike in college. I did my first, the first bike I built up was just a like road conversion. Um, it was a fixed gear. I built it up at a co-op in Raleigh. Built it up myself, painted it, you know, stripped, stripped the paint, painted it, you know, bought all the, you know, put, put together the whole thing myself. It was my first bike and, um, and in Wilmington where I was going to college, everything's flat there so it was just kind of like dumb not to like have it was just like really conducive to like riding fixed out there um so that was my first bike and 
got into like, yeah, alley cat riding and then, uh, yeah, in Wilmington, moved back to Raleigh, got into bike polo. <laughs> um, I got into it when, well, I got to back up. I guess like I had that first like conversion fixed gear that got me going like that was fun for me to ride around for a couple years and then I broke down and was like okay I need to like build up a real bike or like a nicer one I guess one that was um I just like had a friend that was selling some a leader that was uh for pretty cheap and um I built up kind of the a fixed gear freestyle bike because I was really into just like doing dumb shit like track stands and like it was 2008 so it was just like when you know the fix scene was like really big and uh i was just like living in somewhere that was flat and that's like kind of just like all we did was just like do tricks and ride alley cats and ride the streets so yeah after i had i built up that other fixed gear and then i started i had a friend through riding fixed that also wanted to play bike polo and so we started a club in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, we built all mallets all ourselves and uh, just like would heckle people so they could like come out and play. Um, Cause it's not like, not a lot of people know about the sport. We had to like teach them how to play while we were learning ourselves. Um, went to a couple tournaments in the South, South Carolina and whatnot. Um, and then I got a job in Raleigh, so I moved to Raleigh, back to Raleigh, and there was no bike polo club there, and I loved the sport so much, I just wanted to continue playing. So I went to like a ton of group rides and social rides and uh, got people to come out, and I would just like go to the social ride with like all my polo mallets with me and would just like force people to play in the parking lot with me. and. Uh, slowly but surely I had like a we now have like a club that still exists today of like at least a dozen or so people it fluctuates like the numbers and stuff but um yeah so I played polo for about like I guess like two three years in Raleigh and did a lot of traveling um with it I went to Texas, San Francisco, um, all up and down the East Coast. I went to Florida numerous times and uh, New York as well, all up and down the East Coast for tournaments. Um, but yeah, that really like got me into it. I built up a polo bike for that. So that was uh, my next bike that I built up. Um, from there, I wanted to try riding road um, more. So I built up a, all. I just bought a stock all city road bike, Mr. Pink. And that was my first road bike and I started to get into longer distance riding. That turned into wanting to try dirt. So I got um, a Surly Straggler, um, just to test out riding cross and then also try to do like some bike camping and stuff. Um, so I had road bike, cross bike, polo bike, and I'm in 2014, I decided to move out, like drive out to San Francisco and I brought those three bikes with me out here, got a job with TCB, um, did a couple cross races out here, didn't know what I was doing, but obviously just, you know, gave it my best shot. And then um, thankfully, JDR was kind enough to like recognize that I was like doing okay in it and and uh, asked me to be on the TCB team uh, cross team um, which I ended up being the first female to ride a low cross bike in San Francisco um, uh, ride on ride on a low uh, or one of their cross bikes so that was really fun. I really like the team, like the guys that are on the cross team are uh, all really rad dudes. Like I'm, I felt super encouraged 
by all of them and they were really good men, you know, like mentors and like welcoming and just really skilled. I just like always would chase riding with people that were um, better, better than me so that I could, you know, slowly improve my game. Um, so that was cross. Um, what else? And then through cross, after, after, you know, I've been doing cross for two seasons now, two, two full seasons. Um, in the winter time, one of my friends at Box Dog, Jeff Colburn, had this BMX lying around in his, uh, in the shop. <laughs> and he would always be like, hey, I got this BMX bike here. Like, it would be really cool if, uh, if you want it, you're welcome. It's yours, you know? <laughs> you should get it because I've always like talked about how I wanted one but haven't ever bought one so um, one day I decided it was time um, and I bought that and started going to like the skate park um, went to a couple dirt pump tracks too um, it's just super fun I love it because it teaches me disciplines that I can apply to riding a mountain bike or riding a cross bike and riding in the dirt. Um, I didn't start riding dirt until I moved to San Francisco either. Um, like I didn't ride in Raleigh or anything. I just like bought a specialized like hard rock at one point for, I only had it for a couple months before I was like, okay, I need something with like some shocks. <laughs> um, so I bought a hardtail after that, a Raleigh hardtail off of Craigslist after that. Um, so I had both mountain bike, cross bike, became a like full-fledged like dirt person, like didn't really, I stopped playing polo um, and, <laughs> because I was like so in love with the riding out here and it was really like, it, it got me hooked. So um, yeah, it, it really, I feel like I definitely changed like my style and the types of riding that I did once I moved out here. and made it really fun out here. So what got me, what encouraged me, yeah, I started doing, I did a handful of races, but the people that encouraged me, I think that I, that truly like got me into cross were women um, in the Bay Area, like Sam Bell and Christina Peck. Like I went to very, like numerous all women cross clinics um, because, and I think that really like, I probably wouldn't have, fully like gotten into cross had it not been from for those clinics because it, it provided like a really safe space safe environment for for me to just like ride in dirt and look like an idiot and not be embarrassed about what what I was doing um, because dirt was super it's super hard to like get uh, you know, acclimated to riding in dirt so it took me a while and having those women to look up to and to be able to like be able to be like oh whoa like let's I feel like whenever I rode dirt with guys it was just like full blast like 100 miles an hour and just like go super hard but with women it was nice to like slow down and be like oh shit like that part was really hard I want to like go back and do that again and everyone's like yeah for sure like let's do it and like Let's talk about like why, like we talk about like, you know, like encourage and support each other when we're, when we do ride with each other and like in these clinics and it was just like such a great thing. Like I'm so glad that I had those clinics because it really helped me like be able to like practice and like have other like ladies to look up to um, that were doing it. So. The clinics were really great and, but at the same time, I love, I, ha, I kind of was like, being the only female on the low team was, I, I feel pretty spoiled because the guys that were on it were all super, super supportive of me. And like, if I feel like being right, riding with other guys are intimidating, but I feel like you just gotta come to a point where you're just like, you gotta don't, don't like, I feel like a lot of people are embarrassed, like, a lot of ladies that I know, when they ride with all the dudes, they're embarrassed because they don't want to be like, you know, slowest or last or like have everyone wait for you. But you just got to be like, 
everyone, you know, it happens to everyone, like, at some point in, in your, in your, when, when you're in your ride, when you ride, so don't, like, don't apologize for that, and, like, find friends that are, like, down to just ride, and, like, not worry about those things, like, it's about ri having fun, and, like, I think that's what I love about the Bay Area cycling scene, is that, at the end of the day, I wouldn't be doing if it doing it if I wasn't having fun. Um, that's why I love the cross scene out here. Everyone, we take it like seriously, but like you know, our racing, um, and we're really you know a lot of there's a lot of skilled people out here, but everyone is super humble and like approachable. Like when, before I moved here, I knew like Christina Peck was just like such a killer. Like she's like the strongest female that I know, female rider, um, you know, from currying and to cross and being able to just like go to a clinic and like ride with her and learn, learn from her was like really, really awesome. Like, I don't know a lot of cities that like, people are just like so skilled, but like approachable and nice and willing to like want to help you out and like, want to see other people thrive and ride and like get into the scene so that's what i really like about about it um and this year i came to like a point where like i started to do a couple cross clinics myself just like i've started riding cross enough where i want to get back and see other women riding um so i'm stoked on like getting more women interested in the sport and like having an, an environment like a safe environment to learn and ride um in the in the bay area this is the route i used to take home like every night um when i lived here this is, used to be my commute um i lived i was like fortunate enough to find a spot on the panhandle um and live with uh, James Grady, who uh, was another dude who was involved in like Alley Cats um, and just riding bikes in uh, in San Francisco. And um, yeah, so I, he was actually my first roommate and living with him out here was really nice because the house, being on the Panhandle, you can just like be in Golden Gate Park in like like two minutes um that was pretty influential in my um san francisco like riding upbringing because i was like i had just got i just got a mountain bike was able to like just go practice super hard in the park like multiple times a week um it was really cool so the panhandle where the route we're going to do today is kind of out uh like out in Sutro Bass and also Golden Gate Park. Um, and what I love about the park is like, it just like, you kind of, the trails are very like, it takes a while for you to be able to connect them all. Um, they're not very obvious. Like some of them are just like little poached bandit trails that just are very interconnected together. Um, but it took me following uh, JDR and um, a few other dudes like multiple times. I would just have to ride in the park with these guys um, and, and <laughs> in order to do it enough that I like could make sense of like where I was. There's not like a trail map. It's not like super marked or anything. Um, so I guess um, if I've learned anything since moving in the two years that I've uh, lived here. <laughs> oh yeah, good. get my copy all on there. Um, I would say that it's really important to like, just not like, just to have fun with what you're doing and if you're not, it's, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, have fun, ride with people that are better than you. And at the end of the day, just like, 
it's uh, <laughs> really about having you know good friends to ride with, and I definitely like wouldn't be like the rider that I am today if it wasn't for other women um, seeing other women do be like ride and uh, are that are like very strong riders like that encourages me to be you know do shit that like not a lot of not a lot of women do shred it with your friends and have fun while you're doing it <laughs> so caffeinated right now all right <laughs> Here goes my Steph Curry slam dunk. Take the dirt line. Always. Cans, bottles, and paper. You are paper. Then Slam dunk. Got so much coffee everywhere. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it all up in there. 